Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I have another one page wonder. We are gonna use a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. It's double-sided to make this. So this is um, a little journal, and I used just a piece of scrapbook paper that I had. It didn't coordinate the best. I think this one that I chose is gonna look a little bit better with the papers I'm using, but I, I like the contrast with the green. I used uh, my aqua blue paper kit that's available on Etsy. Here I just made um, some journaling spaces, closed it with the little Velcro dots, and then each of these flipped down. So it's pretty simple, but I like how it folds up and I like the different pockets and pass-throughs. It holds a lot of ephemera or whatever you want to put in here. So I layered it with the papers from the aqua blue kit and all these birds. And then I did use a couple of the affirmations from the freebie that's on Buy Me A Coffee that I put out fairly recently. So if you haven't grabbed that, that's available on Buy Me A Coffee. I'll make sure that's linked in the description along with this kit on Etsy. And then I also used a quote, maybe just one, I don't know. I was kind of using up things that I have. This is in my Fall Gratitude kit, the quotes are. And the freebie is also um, connected to that kit. So anyway, yeah, there. And then the little birds. So that's what I made. And I'm going to show you guys how to fold your paper up to make one of these little journals. And then I will decorate it a little bit. Uh, we'll see how much time we have. So the first thing you're going to need, I'm just grabbing one thing I left over here, that you're going to need is a piece of 12 by 12 scrap of paper. And I like using ones, you know, that have patterns and are pretty, but you could use um, a solid color, especially if you're gonna then be layering other papers on it. With the pattern, you know, you really have the option of not even doing as many layers of paper and you could just add pockets and things like that and not, not worry about it. So it's kind of up to you how you wanna do that. So I don't know if you guys saw my crazy scribbles. I will have the measurements for the scoring and everything for you in the description. So don't feel like you needed to try to break what was in that on that piece of paper. I don't usually put it where you can see it just because it's for me to know what I'm doing as I figure out all the measurements myself. So the first thing you wanna do is score your paper. And I've chosen paper that it doesn't really matter which way the directions or the direction is. If you have a paper with the direct with with a direction, some things might end up upside down. So you'll need to give that a little bit of thought. But the the first set of scoring we're doing uh, will you you do want it to at least be in the in the correct. If this the top, this the bottom. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, I am going to score at three and a half inches, four inches, and then at eight inches, and eight and a half. And then we're gonna turn the paper to the left, and we are gonna score at two and a half inches and seven and a half inches. And again, this will be in the description for you. And that is all of our scoring. We are going to cut out a couple of sections, but the first thing I'm gonna do is fold everything and ink those score lines for you. So it'll be easier for you to see where I am scoring. So as always, do your best Maybe use your finger first to make sure everything's lining up and then crease it with your bone folder. Okay, so I did those two. Now I will do these. And I think it helps, 
like I said, to just really, especially these that are only a half an inch apart, you have to kind of fiddle the paper <laughs> um, and then make sure it's straight before you really do a hard crease. Then we're gonna turn it. I think this would also be a really good one if you wanted to, I was thinking about uh, the gratitude kit that I have out, you could print some of those papers to be the layered papers if you don't want to do a journal, you know, that you sew. And each page could be one that you journal on and maybe a little pocket to put one of the prompt cards or something like that in. So just a thought if you happen to have that kit, this one is a nice size and that might be, might be fun. Okay, I am going to ink on the score lines so that when I show you where we're going to cut, it will hopefully be a touch easier for you to see on camera. If you want to ink yours so that it's easier for you to see, go ahead. I also, on mine that I made ahead of time, I inked around all the edges because I like that look. So while you're waiting for me to do this really fast, if you wanna start inking your edges, if you're crafting along with me, uh, go, go for it if you like that look. Okay, we have those. And now I just need to do the other two. Oops. And you do wanna use a scrapbook paper that is a little bit of a cardstock weight. I wouldn't use a really thin piece because it it needs to be a little bit sturdier. These are actually little spines and I did, I'll show you how I added another layer in there to make them um, less likely to crush, to make it a little bit sturdier. So that's just another suggestion for you. Okay. So we are going to, and I'm gonna get my pencil out because I'm not sure which side of the cardstock I'm gonna to wanna to use to reinforce my spine, but we are gonna cut out, I know you're not gonna be able to see it, this section and this section just to the score line. So the two skinny rectangles and then the same here, these small ones. So if I want to, I can erase those lines later. All right, so get your scissors out, and I'm going to start down at this corner, and I always cut just past where all that paper's kind of folded. So I'm cutting the actual score line out. And I'm gonna do the same here. And then to make it neat, I'm gonna turn it and then snip it off that way and hopefully I got it neat. If I need to play with it again, I will. I would suggest, I did not get the score line out. I would suggest, yeah, folding it that way. It's gonna allow me to get that score line out. It's a little crooked. All right, save these because I'm gonna use them to reinforce the spine here in a minute. So all you have to do is cut these out. And along with your measurements for your scoring and everything, I'll also have the link to my Amazon storefront so that if you want to see any of the supplies I'm using, if that's helpful to you, you can check those affiliate links out. All right, save these, you don't wanna lose them. And now we're gonna do these two sections the same way. I am sitting here, it is almost October. My dad's birthday is October 1, so in a couple of days. And I am really ready, I'm really, really ready to start my Christmas crafting. I'm sure I'm gonna to continue to do some more fall things. 
months. We still have October and November, but it just seems like if I don't get started soon, I don't get to do Christmas crafts as long. <laughs> I just bought Joey Cardmaker's new Christmas kit, and I'm really excited. I think it's called Christmas Folk. I haven't printed it yet, but I have um, really looked at the images and the pages, getting an idea of what I want to make with it. And I'm probably going to make at least one large journal because I just think the papers are so beautiful and a lot of ephemera that he included, you know, I'll make that. But I'm also thinking about doing a folio or something, again, layering with some of those papers because I think Christmas folios are so fun. I'm struggling for some reason cutting those out. Turn it this way, that's where it's easier to see and get that little score line out of there. Now the little ones I didn't use, but you may wanna use them to embellish something later. So now is the time if you want to start embellishing, or embellishing, inking. If you know you're gonna want everything to be inked, now would be the time to do that. I'm not gonna take time on camera to ink mine but go ahead and ink if, if, that, if you wanna do that. Now, I, on my prototype, did my flaps with just a tag angled kind of shape to the tops of those. You could certainly do that. And the way I made sure they were all the same as I used my template, I just picked which which angle I want to use and I snipped this way and then I flipped it over and I snipped this way and I did it for all three and then even the layering pieces I remembered which angle I used and made everything match so you can make this out of just a business card an old credit card this is a pretend cardboard credit card um, you could make it out of just a, a rectangle if you don't have a template and you want to do that. I'm going to make this one by rounding the corners just because I want it to look a little different. So I'm going to use the half inch. Now when you're doing this, the big flaps I didn't. These are the pieces that are going to be up like this and they're going to close down this way. I haven't decided if I'm going to have the the flowers on the front or the stripes. So it's the, the shorter flaps that you want to angle or round the corners or do something with. You could, if you have a fancy corner punch, you could use that, whatever you want. You can leave them just the way they are. But I'm gonna angle mine. Nice. And for some reason, I did envision this one with the stripes on the outside when I picked out this piece of paper. So I'm gonna fold it that way and see if I like it. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do the stripes because I want to. Okay, the next thing I would do is reinforce our spines here. And of course, by flipping it over that way, I need to ink those so you can see where I'm working. The little strips that we cut out, we're gonna use the longer one. It's not, it's a little shorter because this section is, uh, ha is the length is longer than the bottom section, but it still works. And I didn't have any problem with it, so that's how we're gonna do it. You could also just cut a strip of cardstock something a little heavy duty to glue in here. This is a half an inch. And these, because I cut them out with the score in there, I've got to trim it off. <laughs> Just a touch to get that paper out of there so that my pieces will fit in between these score lines. You want it to fit in between. And I don't know if you can see that on camera, but you want the folio to be able to fold up when this piece is glued in here without any problems. So you definitely do not want this strip of paper to be wider than the space in there. 
I hope that made sense. So let me just trim both of mine. And again, if I wasn't on camera, I'd probably ink everything because you guys know I like that look. But I'm not gonna take the time right now. Okay, they both are gonna fit in there and I'm gonna glue them down with some wet white glue. Before I do though, I am gonna show you really quick. I was a little rough with mine, even though this is a pretty heavy duty piece of scrapbook paper and tore it <laughs> in a couple of places. You can even see the little piece of masking tape there. I don't mind the look. If you happen to tear yours, this one I haven't, I think it's fine. You can you take a piece of washi tape, a piece of masking tape, and reinforce those if you want to. I am not going to worry about doing that right now. For contrast, I think I'm gonna put the stripe side up, even though it has those little tiny pencil marks on it. I like the contrast. I can go back and erase those later. So I'm just using my Lineco PVA glue in the little bottles. And again, this isn't quite tall enough, so I just put it in there, just sort of center it in. And you can use whatever glue you have. You could use a two-sided tape here, and that would also give you a little more thickness and reinforcement. Now, hopefully, what this has done is, when this is folded, it's just a little bit stronger. The, the, the ability for it to be crushed that way, hopefully, would be a little more difficult to crush it. <laughs> Not saying it can't be. Now, and this is what I was saying, if you like the paper that you chose, how much layering you do really is up to you. If you like the stripes, you know, you could just decorate the front. I layered a piece of paper because I didn't want this green being as prominent and then I cut one of the birds out of one of the big tags so I do have some pieces from this kit that I'm going to use and I have all the measurements again I'll, I'll put them for you in the description that if you do want to layer on every piece what the measurements of these are. But a lot of times when I'm crafting like this, I don't even measure. I pick up a piece of paper and I think, oh, if I leave that much around the edge, this paper will work. Or if I know I want it um, to, to be a much tinier, I'll just lay it here and mark it, cut it, tear it with my ruler. You know, but I'll give you guys the measurements. But I thought it would be fun for me to not layer every one of these this time and just add some pockets and decorate. So again, I hope I'm not confusing everybody. For this folio, it's nice and sturdy because I did all those layers, but I, I layered here. I even put some copy dyed, um, it's faux copy dyed, it's something I printed, but um, pieces of paper for journaling, all of these have a layer, then they have the pockets, because I really didn't want to see all of that design of that scrapbook paper. This one that I chose, I like much better. And so I think I'm just going to decorate. You know, we may do some strips of paper, things like that, but it won't be quite as sturdy, but it will be cute. So I'm gonna do the, the cover first. So I need to think about what I want to put on the cover. And again, use whatever papers you have. This is the bird I used on the other one. I think on this one, I'm gonna use this bird. And I sort of fuss, did a fussy cut for the other one. I'm going to not yet we'll see i'm just gonna cut kind of straight across the top not the tag shape and we'll see what we think this would be a good project if you do have patterned paper that you like from a scrapbook kit and it has some of the extra pieces i'm just going to trim this down a little bit all the way around and 
it, you know, if it has all the different pieces and the little tags and pockets, you know, like you kind of like a digital kit, but if you had all that, this would be a really good project for that. Okay, I'm just gonna put that butterfly right on the front butter. Is this a butterfly, people? This is a bird. It's a bird. And put it right on the front. And again, I can get out my embellishment notebook that I made here in a minute if I wanna add a, a label or I can grab, I have some of those affirmations and quotes and some of my words, we could add a word, so we'll do that. And again, if you need some of those, if you have a way to print, I've got quite a few freebies now on um, Buy Me A Coffee. And if you need like some words, I think, yes, this was like, I think my very first freebie. You need a word or if you want to use some of the affirmations that are up there as well. I think I'm gonna put you matter on this one because that would be a nice gift for somebody. And so if you need need a few things like that, you certainly can go and grab it. And if you don't have a printer, there are places you can take to print them out, um, just onto a cardstock or onto copy paper at you know, different companies. It used to be Kinko's. Is Kinko's still even a thing? Um, I'm not sure, but I know like some of those post here in the United States, like the the post office kind of stores, those kind, not the actual post office, but the mail stores, things like that have printers. So you might be able to do that. Okay. And again, we can get as fancy as we want on the cover. And let's see, on this piece right here, I may add, let's see, let's add a little pocket. And I'm going to use my ruler. I'm, I'm going with the I'm not going to measure method. And I'm just going to tear. And I'm going to eyeball the depth of the pocket. And we're just going to put a, a, the simple rectangle pocket right on here. And isn't it fun how just like a little pocket that then you decorate or stick something in can make a project just look so much more interesting and cute. All right. So even though the colors aren't exactly the same with the scrapbook paper and, and the digital kit, I do think they are coordinating well and they're cute. Let's see if we have a little bird or somebody. I think I had some extras of those out here that we could put on that pocket. He's a little chunky. I was trying to find one that maybe I can punch out with a circle punch. Let's see. Here's a one and a half inch punch. We'll just get part of our bird. Oh, it didn't punch the best. And I think I need to, all of my ink pads need to be re-inked. And it may just be time for me to splurge on some new ones. For some reason, it seems like even when I re-ink them these days, it's taking, it, I mean, I put a lot of ink on there and let it soak in. And it just still seems to be a little bit of an issue. I'm not quite sure why. If anybody knows or has a theory on what could be causing, just wanted a strip of something to put under here. What could be causing that, let me know. It's prob, well, <laughs> look at all the ink on my finger because I've been crafting all day today. It is probably because I leave it open for so long when I'm crafting. It's probably exactly what the problem is, but I really, don't know how to resolve that. So I, I sometimes try to do the majority of my inking and then close it and then glue, do other things and then open it up as I need it. But I don't know. I don't know. Okay, cute. 
right? And then when I put, I haven't decorated these or anything, but then when we put some tags and things in there, I think that'll look great. Now for these, I did like adding some journaling paper. So again, I am going to use the tear method, not the measure method. But again, I'll give you the measurements, not that you can't figure it out yourself, but if you wanna just go ahead and cut all of the papers to layer, you'll see, you'll, you know, it'll say you need four pieces that are three and a quarter by four and a quarter, because that would go on these two panels and these two panels, right? This one will be a little bit larger because it's taller. So I'll, I'll give you all those measurements. And I did that with the first one. So I have it all figured out. I just, it was a little tedious to be honest with you guys. Not in a bad way necessarily. But again, you know me. I kind of just like the non-measure method. So I'm gonna tear the first one. And it would help if I tear it in the right place. Let's see. There we go. I want it a little bit shorter. And then I'm gonna use this one because I know I need one more that's this size to match this panel. This panel's wider. So first I'm going to, the height is the same. So I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to tear my paper and hope that it's straight. I need two. I'm just using the piece of paper I already tore to help me with my measurements. I needed two that size. So these two will go here and here, and then I need one for this panel. And I already know that I have the correct height. So now it's just deciding on the width and I'm using the pocket to help me eyeball it. And now I have my three pieces that I am going to glue down to be my journaling spots. Now I decorated the other ones. I don't know if you'd say it was decorated necessarily. I put a little torn strip of paper at the top of each of these just to kind of embellish it and give it some interest. And the, the aqua blue kit comes on one of the, here, on this tag page with this strip. And I just hand tore it apart and put a strip on each of these journaling spots. And you could put a piece of washi tape. That would be super cute. All kinds of options. Okay, so I was thinking about making a journal that's more of a, like, one for my kids to fill out at the holidays. And again, my kids are, are young adults, but I think you could do this with, with the younger kids. So my idea was doing one where, and not a big journal, I don't know, maybe 10 pages, something like that, or, or 10 topics. I may put a few more pages since there's five kids, but where they could talk about like, you know, what, what is our, my favorite um, holiday tradition th that we do in our family? Um, what is um, one of my favorite memories from Thanksgiving? Uh, what, what do, you know, what is a gift that I remember giving um, and receiving? things like that and have it out at Thanksgiving and at Christmas when we're all together as a family and have them, and they don't have to do every page or every topic. I didn't want to make it like a chore, but just have it out. And then I can have some of their handwriting, some of their words and thoughts um, in a journal. So tell me what you guys think of that idea and if that's something you would be interested um, in as well. Like I said, I was thinking I could try to brainstorm topics, but even have pages where if you want to do your own topic, right? Like if there's something, maybe there is a family tradition, like maybe every year you go um, Christmas caroling with your family and you want to ask the question, you know, what 
what is your favorite memory of, of our Christmas caroling escapades, <laughs> however you want to word it, right? Or what is your favorite um, Christmas carol that we sing um, when we go out? Something like that. You know, like you could do your own that maybe you're quite specific. But I was thinking about trying to put something like that together as part of a holiday kit. And I'm, I'm thinking about making it be Christmas themed, but it also, like I said, I was thinking about having it out as early as Thanksgiving to give them time maybe to look at it and to go ahead and write some things down if they want to, but then also if they wanted to give it some thought and um, work on it when we're together at Christmas. So that's one of the things my brain has uh, been one of the things I've been thinking about my brain so let me know if you like that idea I would appreciate the input or is it better that I just get a notebook or a journal and do it for my family and leave it at that <laughs> that's better too let me know your thoughts okay I am going to again use my tear method and my intent is to approximate a square it doesn't have to be perfect I just wanted a piece like that because then I'm going to make angled pockets and I'm going to use my scissors it's a little bit easier for me they don't have to match perfectly for what I'm going to do and I'm going to put a corner pocket well I didn't think that through because if it was a perfect square it would have worked and I did a rectangle. So let me think about this. How wide is it? It is, everything is fixable. I'm gonna say it's eight centimeters just cause it's a little bit easier for me to get, it's closer to eight centimeters. Nope, this isn't gonna work cause I've already cut it. All right, so my other option is to Go back to what I said before, which is they don't have to match. This one, I can just chop the corner off, and they're going to go like that, and I'm not going to worry about it. If you want the two triangles to match, make it a perfect square. So cut a square that is three and a half inches by three and a half inches, and then cut it on the diagonal, and then you will be able to put one half of the square on one side, and one half of the square on the other, and they will match. If you don't care if they match, wing it like I did, and enjoy your pockets that don't match. <laughs> okay? Everything is fixable, and I have enough scraps here that I could have just gotten another piece of paper out, but sometimes I think my favorite journals, my favorite folios, my favorite tags, all of those are the things that aren't perfect that I was like, oh, that's a happy mistake. Didn't Bob Ross used to say that when he would be um, painting? He was like, oh, let's make it a bird or oh, we can make a cloud. <laughs> you know, happy mistakes. It's okay. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. All right, I'm going to use a different pattern. Let's find another piece. This isn't even a scrap, this is a full piece, but I wanna use some of this, I think, and I also have this strip. I wanna make a little belly band, and I am going to, now, to, to be safe, if I was, and I'm gonna to try to show you guys better practices than me just winging it. I'm using my grid paper to line up. I want my belly band to be three quarters of an inch wide. So that's three of these squares. For some reason I'm having trouble seeing it. It's this one and this one, goodness. Okay. And line up my ruler so that I know it's straight. Hold it nice and firm. And now I have a straight tear. And now I can just set it here on my flap and know how to get the right height on it. And all of these 
pieces that I'm choosing to put in here, again, you can change yours up. You don't have to do a belly band. You could do three pockets right across all three of these. It would help if I did the belly band in the right direction. You could um, do some mini, mini strips and put little tiny things in here. You could do more journaling paper. There's, again, the possibilities and the different choices really are endless and I don't want you to think yours has to look exactly like mine to be beautiful. Okay, I want, to, I'm gonna do probably just a rectangle pocket here. So again, I'm going to use the, whoa, I'm going to use the folio itself to help me hopefully get this straight into the width that I want. And I'm gonna cut this into two pockets. And I'm gonna guess these are gonna be close to two inches, ah, one and three quarters each. Close enough for me. And I'm gonna do one here and one here. And then in the middle, I am going to this time you do a rectangle on purpose, I think. Am I? No, I'm not. Okay, my paper is now three and a quarter inches. So I'm going to cut it to be three and a quarter inches by three and a quarter. So now I have a square. And this time when I cut my angle pockets, see how they match? If I'd put them here and here, this time how they matched, we could layer, that would be fun, but I, my plan was to just put them right here. Now, I wish I had done those out of a different piece of paper, so I might here in just a minute. I like the idea of having different patterns, and I'm sure later I will come back through and add more words, perhaps some of the quotes or affirmations, some of the birds and really make this one so pretty like the first one. But I'm gonna wrap up the video here soon and let you guys just go have fun making your own and decorating it. If you haven't already and you liked this idea, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. We're gonna make it out of this piece. And I said three and a quarter by three and a quarter, didn't I? I'm gonna make it the same size as the first one that I'm not using. Um, if you like the video, leave me a comment. Um, definitely comment if you like my idea for a holiday kind of journal -y idea book for the family. Uh, subscribe to my channel, please. Tell your friends. And if you have a minute and you want to, please go check out some of the links that I put in the description for you guys. Even if you don't buy anything, it really helps. It tells the computer that, hey, people like what Pam is um, doing. And it's a free way to support me and other you know, other creators, other artists that you guys like and follow. And if you do happen to make a purchase and we get a few pennies at no cost to you, that's also very helpful. I am doing this now as my full-time gig and um, I'm having a blast. And I try not to, I try to just do what I love and, and let everything work out. And for the most part, that, that works great. But if I don't tell you guys about the opportunities, it's also hard for you to know how you can you know, be helpful and supportive, right? So anyway, that's what somebody told me, by the way, when I said, is it annoying um, if I mention these things? And somebody said, we don't know about it if you don't tell us. So I'm going to go with that. Again, I'm going to go through later and decorate this up. But this kind of reminds us that we have all these fun pockets we made. Oh, let me, let me do the little Velcro dots really quick. Again, this is optional. You could also do a different type of closure if you want to. I'm just gonna really quick do Velcro dots because I find it, um, it helps everything fold up well if these aren't flipping around too much when I'm trying to close it up. I didn't even decorate the, the flaps and I may later. But I know by doing Velcro dots and then you have a Velcro dot here in your journaling space might be annoying later. I think it's worth it 
That's just my opinion. If you don't, you could play with putting the Velcro dot here. We'll do it on that one and see. Um, I'd kind of thought about that instead of having it in the middle of where I'm trying to write, if I put it here in the, the, the decorative part, let's see well, if it'll hold it down enough. I think it will. I, I, I definitely think that, that's an option. So if you're going to go with this option, don't, don't put it on your flap first. Put it where you want it to be on the decorative piece. And then layer it, and that way when you close them, they'll line up correctly. This one I did right here. And again, I would just write around it and not worry about it, but there, you have another option. All right, this one obviously is not completely done. It needs so, a little more love, but I am happy with it. I like how it's turning out, and um, I hope you guys do too. So until next time, I hope you have fun with this one-page wonder. Have a great day, everybody.